Hello, my name is Dr. George Machaki and welcome to Retail Merchandising. Uh, the, the, today, or this week, we're going to be covering Chapter 6, Fashion Merchandising. So what about fashion? What you're going to learn in this chapter, remember you're taking me for an online class, and this is supplement to the forums, and plus the only lecture that you you see is to these, uh, these uh, half an hour to an hour uh, short uh, uh, lecture recordings. Or you're taking me to face-to-face -face class, and this is a supplement to the lecture that we've done in the, uh, in the classroom. You have uh, available to you my concept maps. Remember, my concept maps always come in one sheet or in two sheets. Your whole uh, idea here is as you've read the chapter, I'll put that in here, looking nice. As you've read the chapter, you could add on to the concept map. So if I'm reading the, oops, I got them upside down. I'm not very good at, uh, at this. There you go. Sorry. Please, excuse me. Okay, so if I read the chapter, you should be doing here. We're going to talk about different websites. I always like going through the websites. And remember, wherever you have the plus signs on here or on here, means that there will be more uh, information. Read the chapter from the author's good book, easy reading book. Take, uh, uh, open up my concept maps or in the PDF file. And uh, as you're reading it, read it. Pretend that uh, you're in the lecture room taking down the notes. And then later on, look at this, uh, either in a face-to-face -face or in a forum with me. Uh, look at my uh, this video and add on. I'll, I'll go some of the, some areas will go faster because the book, remember, you, you're not going to learn everything else just by this um, one-hour uh, uh, video or uh, flip the classroom that I'm presenting to you. You have to read the material. The material will be your first exposure. And they, the, the book goes into a lot more detail. I'm just covering the chapter just to kind of say, oh, oh yeah, I read this. Now I kind of understand it. So I'm putting the pieces together in a more uh, uh, everyday language, still utilizing the same vocabulary that the author is utilizing. Okay? So let's see. So where are we? Let's go on some of the websites. So remember, you're doing. Uh, remember, you're either taking, you're either a, a, an entrepreneur in the retail merchandising uh, uh, avenue of your career. Or you're a student taking me at a community college, and this is you're going for a marketing degree, or you are in retail merchandising, and you say, hey, what could I use? Or I'm in the fashion um, uh, program at, at the community college I'm teaching, and now how do I get my foot into the door? Whether it's in the fashion, whether it's retail merchandising, or any kind of merchandising, or I'm an entrepreneur and I just want to. Uh, I'm already in the business. I just want to think, am I doing something right? I can't understand it. Let me look. Or some of you are taking this as a refresher course or a professional growth class for your work. Uh, many times I have to do that also. And this is just a refresher. Even though you know a lot of this stuff, oh, man, I forgot about that. Let's try it. Okay, so let's look at the websites. Remember, you have the access to my concept maps. You're using Blackboard course uh, management system. You always have your grades. Uh, you'll be doing a, uh, what do you call it, uh, be open up a retail uh, a merchandising shop. Uh, it could be fashion or anything else. That, you know, I always tell individual I had the last semester I had a couple of individuals that were in the retail merchandising and they were, uh, you know, managers or assistant manager and they had to open up a new, uh, you know, when we talk about positioning, bringing a new product, how do I market it, how do I position it, everything you're learning here. So they utilize that as uh, their final paper and their final presentation in class. So let's look at some websites, okay? And I have this at 200. And those of you looking at it, you know, I'll, you always slow me down. If you miss something, go back. Uh, don't worry about it. All right? That's why I, I do it on this. How does it see in the fashion industry? Now, this one is uh, it's a YouTube. I have some YouTubes. I always provide you the link. I'll leave it in here. So if I look at it, here's the link. You know, it's about four minutes. How do I survive in the, what do you call it, in the fashion industry? Let's see. I, I'm going to go through this because this whole thing is going to be on uh, uh, fashion. And I try to do it so it's a little bit easier for you. So after a few years in the business, we um, probably like 10, maybe okay. 8, we sold, sold our company to Kelwood Corporation. Black is in this season also. A lot of money. That was a payday. I paid off all my bills. Which is another thing. When you build up something, you usually build it up to sell it. So don't be Remember, too attached you're building to your up to name sell your name your or anything logo, else. Because whatever you, you could started grow. that was hot, you can go start it again. Like... Donna Karen. She does not own Donna Karen. Tommy Hilfiger does not own Tommy Hilfiger. They work. They're employees of the company. Someone else owns it. Donna Karen has a whole other line and collection now called Urban Zen. It's not Urban Zen by Donna Karen because she doesn't own that name anymore, but you know that's still her. Like Harvey Weinstein um, 
started a film company. He's a big you know, producer. He started a film company years ago, and it was called Miramax, which was his mom and dad's name, Mira and Max. And he was so attached to this name, and he sold the company for hundreds of millions of dollars, and he didn't know what to do. And then he went and created the Weinstein Company. So he's still him. So we went and sold our company. See, um, once you get that on, name Russell and recognition with the industry, they'll find you. They'll know who you are. The That's the expertise that you're and trying to get. Years later, Russell so right now you're just developing it. Now he's doing other things. So he has... What other lines does he have? Argyle Culture, Russell Simmons Collection. Look where all these people started off. Start off with a Tartan name. Blue. Don't be so much, I want to keep There's it to it. Else. I want to be famous, Walmart. if that's your goal. Or you could keep the name and you want to American control the business. A lot of, American there's a lot classic. Of, uh, and you go on about your business and you do it respectfully. So that's okay. So we're still friends. And we still love each other. He was on my little podcast today. Did you guys see our little podcast? Well, some of you were there, because I know. Um... So I think that's kind of the state of the business right now. And I'm still at Talbot Corporation, which is fat fashions. And I went on to create different lines. So I have Remember, you could be an entrepreneur or an entrepreneur um, working for yourself or working for somebody else. This is what we're going to learn boys. about the fashion. I started KLS How do I start? A lot of you uh, are at a community line. college. So Where do I go? You got to start off. You're not going to be the expensive, I mean, the well-known individual. Back a couple years ago, that was fabulous. Now it's not. No Remember, trends go. So then I went and made change. Fabulosity, which was at J.C. Penney's, which was off the principles of my book. And at the time, when I was going to J.C. Penney's, not a lot of people were going to J.C. Penney's and Sears and Targets. All of the consumers were, but none of the designers thought it was cool to do that. You had a small handful that did do it. I think Vera Wang is there and different people. But now, everybody and their mamas at and that's what you'll learn Targets about inside this uh, reading. It's a whole mass first or very production. Early. Yeah. Or so fashion. I, I made Fabulosity, and then... Um, Remember, you want to go someplace where no one launched, is there. Macy's, you can get your niche. Select Macy's stores now and online. That's a plug. How did she start off? Look, just like you Couture are. Couture by community Kimura college, with a K. Working Couture her way by out. Kimura. And nothing in that collection is like over 50 bucks. So that's what I call recession-proof shopping. And it's great fashion. It looks great. And, you know, I think that people need... Even in a recession... Women are going to go get dressed. Women are always going to look But good. if you have a household, a man and a woman, and it's a dollar that's found, who's going to get that dollar after the kids are okay? The woman. She's going to buy her makeup and her skincare, and she's going to get her jeans. And so, and I also have a diffusion, a diffusion line, which is at Walmart, and it's called um, Fat Right now she's basically, silver. look how she's selling. Indirectly, Fat now you know you can find her stuff. Like she's not looking at the high end. She's not looking at the low end. It's okay. Were a mad at that and like, how could you put things at Walmart? But people go to Walmart to get their diaper and their formula and even a microwave, and they might need to get a little pair of jeans. And they're not shopping at the mall. And what they're buying at Walmart is not what you guys are buying at the mall. So don't worry. But I feel like fashion should be inclusive of everyone. Very good. No exactly really what you're reading. Fashion trend excluded. Thank you. She. Okay, are we good? Now I'm going to stop this. Okay, so we finish with this. And there's other things you can look at the sites. Remember, my whole thing in fashion, when you look in a career, look at other sites. See how other people started off. Don't, th yeah, I mean, some people right away to move up. Some, you have to, the majority of us will take us a little while to get to where you want to go. Have the goal, use your creativity going forward. Okay, so I'll stop that. There's other sites uh, on here. We're going to try to do on this one. Careers in fashion. Now, this one I think is eight minutes. I'm not going through the whole thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Fashion merchandising jobs is uh, something that we probably are all okay, familiar this is a good with, one. but we don't actually know the technical um, specifications for it. Um, fashion merchandisers are in charge of the retail stores and public or the displays that. And that's another way to get it. A fashion merchandiser the that the or a buyer. And people who draw people in to walk into the store and possibly um, buy, buy things. A window fashion dresser. Fashion merchandising, um, they usually have a requirement of two years of marketing or fashion design, and it's also a job that you actually could... Um, a community college teaching at Harper College has a fashion and, design very, program, has a fashion uh, uh, program, excellent program in, in Cook County. If you teach at Lake County, you could also go with... Here, if they don't offer that at the college I teach there. You do have a sense of when you are fashion merchandising, you are styling. You're styling mannequins. Um, you're making people feel like this is who they are and who they want to be. And you're 
Another way to understand the clothing, to get into the system, to make your connections, your network, you got to start someplace. They're going to look at, wow, who did that window? Look how it caught my attention. And it doesn't always have to be in the fashion. Remember, I always throw uh, 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 Ace Hardware because I had a student that went in that way. And she says, but I'm not going. It's one way getting in there. They need some creativity. If you're creative, people are going to uh, identify you. Beverly Hills or Melrose or any of these shops, there's hundreds to choose from, but which display is the one that's most appealing to me? Which one draws me in to choose from? And that's how with everybody. Have to know your customer, so communicating from last chapter so to your which customer. Which one of them are you going to go into? So, uh, fashion merchandiser um, is really important to usually a successful company or successful business. As far as you could work as a contractor that, or an independent fashion merchandiser to small the retail so stores to help them out. Say, hey, let me see what you have. I could design something. Are we good? Remember, uh, uh, how to be successful, you have on here. We talked about her. There's different lines, lines of visual merchandise. Class, in, in a face-to-face -face class, I'm showing all these, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, short clips, and we discuss them uh, in a lecture. On an online class, if you're strictly taking me strictly for online, I have the links. I know a lot of students oh, another link I can look at. So you have to look there. We'll have the lecture with the mind map. So let's look at the links. Look at the links to help you out there. Okay? So we took care of that. NFL. Now this one I, I throw in here because it's just a you know, uh, uh, National Football League. When I look at fashion, we're going to talk about fashion. Right? We're going to talk about fashion. You're going to look at the difference between fashion and styles. You're going to learn this from the reading. You're looking at different trends and which are fads. You know, trends are longer. Uh, you know, they come back at certain times. Something in style could be in style but not fashionable. Um, and then you're going to look at fads that are a real short time frame and then they're, they're gone. But now, uh, if I look at the NFL and the you know, National Football League, and not they're in their uniform, they're out here getting the awards or whatever the award. So let's look at this one. I just want to show you this. If I look how they're dressed, <laughs> I'll throw this up. Oh, uh, shoot. I get a check. Look, I, I shouldn't complain. Look, I got half a uh, way in here. Look how they're dressed. Look at this. Uh, they're posting. Look at the clothes. S stripes. Solid. Black. This one. Uh, white and black. This one. That. Okay, one color. Uh, it kind of blends in. Blends in. Blends in. This one looks like he's on a yacht. Nothing personal. Come on. I'm looking at a different fashion. This one talks. This one's nicer. This one uh, every day. Conservative. So let's see what we have in here. Next, what do we have? Previous post. Okay, so there they're at there. Here's his dressing. He looks nice. He's got a tie on. Come on. He's got a hat. Uh, he's selling. Come on. And, and I think, let me close this thing off. I think. Uh, uh, all right. So what else do we have in here? Uh, Look at this outfit. I'm not saying I may not wear this. I may wear it. I may not. Who are you targeting? Who are you targeting? Remember, celebrities are a big thing in fashion. If I see a celebrity wearing it and I happen to have that and my products are moving, he's wearing it or she's wearing it, pow, I have that in the window. Let's make it happen. Remember, you're looking at different events. Okay, this one's okay. You know, right? I could probably wear that. Goes with the hat. The shirt likes nice. You know, the white collar. That was about. Nothing personal, about 10, 15 years ago, that was a style, it came back. So if I'm looking at style, the shirt, everything else, the white collar, that's a style. Is it fashionable? Is it fashionable now? That's what you're going to be reading about. Let's see, I'm going to go through a few of these. This one looks all right. You know, now, instead of white collar, got a black uh, collar. He looks on it, you know, uh, sleeves and everything else. Is, should he have longer sleeves? Does it look too tight? I'm not asking. Remember, I'm looking at Taylor. You're a fashion. What could you do? Or this is the way to look. The people are going to look at that. Now this one here, the nice, got a different color, uh, right? Uh, more than mature, not, not that, but there are different watches. He's looking, this guy here, very uh, uh, conservative, business-like, comparing, you know, he's got the, uh, uh, what do you call the handkerchief that used to be very fashionable. And then they said, oh, George, that's too old-fashioned. It's coming back. Okay, uh, this guy, bow ties, my goodness, bow ties coming back. He said it old fashioned. I got ties, all these bow ties. Yes, put his picture in there if I'm someplace else. Get the client. Do you want the bow ties? Okay. Um, all right, and I'm going uh, to sell Let's see the next one. Look, he's happy. Just they're more of a conservative, not too bad. You know, just skinny tight. You got wider ties, skinnier ties. He come in. I don't get rid of half the stuff because maybe in a few years we'll be back in fashion. I don't have to buy them, especially if they're given. This one's looking at, look. <laughs> I get a kick out of it. Yeah, what the heck is he doing? There's a lot of statement. Uh, uh, the Hornet. Okay, I'm not going to go into that. All right. Are we good? Now, this one here, does it look good? 
See, it may not look good on me. It looks good on here. I know a lot of times, you know, he's very muscular. They always say try to get it more of a tailor so it doesn't look like it's tight in. I'm not a fashion designer. I just know how to tell me a business. You got to look a uh, uh, flow. And later on, we'll talk about different things. Remember, I am a business person trying to sell. What am I selling? Even people like, I like that guy. He's a business person. I like this guy. He's more of the celebrity. What am I doing? Okay. So I'm going to put this out of here. Let me just close this one off. Okay. So we did pretty good. All right, so now the other one I have, I got clear vision with fashion. If I look at glasses, I could go real quickly. I'm not going to go through this. I, let me go with the glasses that's going on here. Uh, and I'll do the glasses, uh, uh, sunglasses style uh, YouTube. Okay, let me just go on this one. What is style sunglasses? One media. Da, 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 da. I got to listen to the ad. Okay, let's open this up. Remember, what's fashionable? My glasses right now is unfashionable. I look at uh, 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 Dick Clark. I like that. That looks good. Male, female. Let me just turn on the music a little. Probably be awesome. Jeez, like that. It's like the commercial. Fashionable. All right. Look at a different fashion. Okay. Bigger glasses. You can't see the eyes. This is fashionable too, right? Guys, look at this. Uh, and look at the haircuts. Like, everything goes. What is the style going in with this person? This one here, very uh, bigger glasses. I remember those fashions coming back and forth. Is that stylish now? Remember, you're buying. Look at these guys, little visors on here. Jeez, it looks like. Uh, I don't know if I'd buy it, but that could be fashionable. It looks rugged, fashionable. I'm out there. Look at this one, uh, blue. Different guys. A little more of a modern look. Class, when you're buying your merchandise, your buyer, those are going to be buyers. You're buying stuff, hopefully, it's going to be in fashion. You're buying it six months to a year before the season comes. That's where you have to know what's buying. What's going? This is more like a classic. We're going to talk about classic. It could go uh, fashionable anytime. you right. Classic, a little darker. Okay. So I took care of that. Let me get out of here. Let me see. I don't want to watch the rest. Okay. So we finish. As finished as I am. I'm going to just stop this. Okay. Excuse me. All right. So we're in there. Look at different glasses. You have everything else. Best glasses for your face. It tells you what's fashionable for your face. Uh, men's review. Retro uh, city sunglasses and giveaway. Little different. Uh, here, uh, face shape sunglass. How to choose the best uh, uh, sunglass. So much in just in one. And this is retail merchandise. All I'm doing is a niche. I want to sell them sunglasses. I can have a whole bunch, but which classes? Do I get rid of them or just wait till the style comes back? Okay, so we have that. Okay, now the one I'm going to look at this one in plus sizes, and I'm just going to go into 2015 because I'm looking at 2000. This is Bing. Uh, I, 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 I forgot. I got I to I gotta remove one. Um, okay, let me just go in here. Okay, that one here. Let's just go in here. If I'm just going to go on this one plus sizes, like it or not, most Americans are heavier, including myself. You know what I mean? We're not as active. We, we have a lot of uh, stuff out there. Uh, environment. We're more plus sizes. So if you look at somebody that's just more of the uh, uh, petite or sizes, majority of women, they look good, great, but that's not the reality. I can't look at myself in that. So a whole plus sizes come in. Look at the different styles on here. These are just images. They're not selling it there. Plus size top. Look, you have different images. You know, make you fit in. This one is more for dressier, right? Different sizes. Some likes to be, you know, they have certain bikinis that fit. Look, younger women, bigger women, all right? You look at a more mature woman, housewives, right? How do I fit in for wedding dresses? You know what I mean? I'm more of a, a, a broad shoulder type of woman. I'm very athletic. Which ones are we looking at? I like more of the, uh, the leather. You know what I mean? Uh, but look at the sides, the different styles. You know, the stripes make you make heavier. Does make it look? Uh, does it make it look uh, more fuller? You, you know what I mean? Uh, they've got different sizes. Depending, you're still looking good. Different sizes, different makeup. This is all for plus size ladies, not only women, children. Uh, I mean, uh, even children. And here we got teenagers. So it's something to think about. Plus size women right another market that you want to fill that no one else has full and that's what you're trying to do okay so we have all that and then i have the uh no one's men let's see i haven't i might as well hit it for the guys got all the ladies okay so what's going on here this is 10 minutes i'm not going to go into there this is fashion tv and i'll just move this along see what's in for the guys like you're right because i've got all the ladies out there watching gentlemen and go, hey uh, I mean, guys, looking at the ladies. Let's look at the men. What's men? This is fashionable. I could kind of walk like that. With the gym shoes, maybe, maybe not. My son, this is good. Very fashionable. Look, 
And you got different. Look at the look at the people on there. You don't have one. You got different culture. You have Korean. You have, you have Japanese. You have a uh, 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 different model. Uh, look at all clean. Look, look. Just very clean. Very conservative. Right, but still looking good. Right, the look and everything else. Look at the shoes. I think a lot of the stuff now is without sock. How are you going to come in, ladies? Oh, jeez. I, I go out somebody to look good when I'm at the beach. The guy has my body. But they took my face away from there. This looks like a mismatch, but that's not up to me, all right? Remember, if you can come to the office, uh, where did you get the shoes from? But that's me. I'm just kidding. I'm concerned. But I'm a buyer. I can say, man, I know my market. I'm selling Chicago. I'm selling Newtown area. I'm selling a certain area, Old Town area. I'm selling an area where there's more of the younger, the, uh, the the hipster, whatever. There's more of the area. Where's my customer? Who's my customer? Who am I selling to? Remember, that's what they're looking for. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. We'll speed it up here. Let's see what they have on here. White's in. I think this was in 2000. I want to say this was for 2000. Oh, this is for spring 2012. So it's already... Could be unfashionable. I think black is the color that's going in. All right. So let me just get out of here. Are we good? Let me finish this. And then we're going to go into our lecture. Okay. We good? And you can look at the different sizes. Here's 2003. Could uh, the tribulation... Okay, I don't know where the heck that came in for. Okay, are you good? If the tribulation comes in, don't worry about the fashion. You might still want to be fashionable when you're uh, crossing over. I'm just kidding with that, all right? So fashion is everywhere. Let's go into the lecture. You have the lecture. Remember, I got some of the blue, or if I got some of the square boxes, be aware of it. You may see it on the exam. So fashion is everywhere. Apparel, remember, blue, and accessories. Like it or not, if I look at a fashion, makeup uh, only one area uh, of the fashion. If I look at apparel, when we think of fashion, we think about this, and we only think about, you know, the jewelry or the watches or the face. Remember, I'm selling myself as a brand. Who am I? What am I? I think the, uh, I like to always the larger look. I went with the what I called the these. I called the... Uh, 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 Dick Clark, uh, uh, you know, Superman uh, 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 look, because that was the look at that style. That was outdated and it came back, and I, I still like it a little better. But it depends. Yeah, I got a little larger uh, 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 nose, so I could uh, larger uh, glasses. Remember, they have the whole thing and how you set up on the face. But you have to understand your customer. If you have a lot of individuals that have more of around their faces coming into your store, you have to have glasses to fit them so they don't feel don't look awkward okay so uh, remember uh, apparel and accessories only one area cars and furnishing is the next one home furnishing is fashionable because it's, it's a statement about myself okay so let's talk about fashion is a form of expression widely accepted by a group of people over time it could be a small niche it could be a whole population when you look at uh, the the video that says your know, careers in fashion when she opened up her thing in walmart or what the hell, it's still fashion for some people they're to shop it you know i may be a very fashionable person but i gotta buy diapers i'm not gonna worry i'm gonna go with diapers or diaper walmart's open and they're all well, i'm in here i get some makeup what's the difference i can mark it up there what they call mass fashion is that target and everyone else is now uh, uh, uh having clothes similar to the the high-end fashion we're going to talk about. How does fashion differ from style? Okay, let's see what style. The items are characteristic. Crew, uh, crew or V-neck uh, uh, sweatshirt or T-shirt. You know, a lot of times when I'm wearing an open things, I don't like the uh, uh, the, the crew neck always because after they stretch out unless they're new. I like the V-neck so you don't see it. A, a T-shirt keeps you kind of from sweating. But, you know, if I'm wearing a heavier, but is it in style or not? What color? Some are style, some are pockets, some not style. Yeah, but, but they're basically a style. But are they fashionable? Depends who's wearing it and who do you try to try to look up to, or who's my uh, role model. So I'm gonna look at fashion for uh, versus style. Write this down, and you see this one. Style is not synonymous with fashion. Sometimes that is dated is said to be out of style, when in fact it is out of fashion. Remember the style, the T-shirts, the V. It's out of style. Yeah, you know, they say it's dated out of style, but it's really out of fashion. Style doesn't change. Only when style is popular, remember the V T shirts are the different color, is it fashionable. All fashions have one style, but not all styles are fashion. A tongue twister, but don't worry. Fashion changes, styles do not. Remember like a bell bottom pants? Is it uh, uh, is that's the style? It never changes, but is it uh, fashionable? It depends on uh, uh, you know it takes its uh, 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 when you look at your business cycle or your fashion cycle. We're going to talk about safari jackets, a style, whether it's fashionable or not. People go hunting, they use it, but I want it now. It's fashionable because everyone's wearing it. I see some um, 
uh, some celebrity doing something in Africa, helping kids out, not hunting or helping sell, save the uh, elephant. Uh, you know, I'm doing my social uh uh, what do you call it, the responsibility, saving the elephants because people are going after the ivory and you see him or her having a safari outfit up. Oh, that's fashionable. He's wearing that. Now I want to be that because it, and, and it may say save the elephants, uh, save the ivory or something. You know what I mean? Not a little ivory uh, hanging out there. It wouldn't be very fashionable. It wouldn't be very uh, uh, politically correct. But what would happen is, you see, now it becomes, a, it's a, you, you, you carry it, and all of a sudden it becomes a fashion, and all of a sudden my store goes on. I don't want to carry enough because I want to get so many people to like it or do hunting, and now it's in style. I go, what? I mean, it's, it's a style, but now it's in fashion, so I missed the boat on that one. I try to get as many as you can, okay? And he says, in 1990 Casual Fridays, uh, Levi Strauss created the Docker. Remember, when the environment came, businesses, you could come in there, uh, uh, on Fridays to let loose, you don't have to be always so rigid in attire, but you have to be business attire. What's business attire? They turn around and said, "Hey, we'll make the Dockers line." This is not jeans. It's nice Dockers, still made out of cotton, still flexible, still kind of half dress, but not dress. A lot of times when I uh, used to work outside. Uh, in the office meeting, very nice suit. I had to go outside because I had construction people that would work underneath me. Then I would have like dockers, still professional business. What's my tire? What am I going to utilize it for? To still look that I'm fashionable, or respectful. Okay? So he's taking care of that. Now, let's look at trends. When I look at trends, I'm going to close off fashion. Difference between fashion and trend. Trends implies the direction or movement of a fashion. So if I'm looking at a trend, excuse me for a second. If I'm looking at a trend, Okay, so let me just click on here. Remember, and, 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 I, and I specifically didn't do anything with uh, this kind of furniture. It's not too traditional, it's more of a fashional. Cranium barrel, here's it is. Simple lines, easy, right? Flexible, still comfortable. You know, it depends which way fashion. Remember, trends is the direction fashion is moving. Remember, trends are defined, and you should remember this, by acceptance of your target audience or the group of people, by the direction it's moving going forward, dura duration, how long is it, whether it's a trend, it could be short, fashionable, maybe a little longer, and the relationship it has between uh, that uh, target uh, audience or the individual who's uh, uh, pushing the trend or creating the trend. Which, uh, uh, which way it will go. Okay, fashion trends are often used interchangeably. Remember that it's in between fashion trends. People forget it's a trend, it's a fashion. Uh, uh, you know, like product and services and marketing, we look at it one as a product or, or service, even though they're specific, but they're so close. You, most people in the industry will say it's a new trend or it's a new fashion. Okay, cocooning. Cocooning, when you look at cocooning, it's just a vegetating because we don't like to go out. It's a lifestyle. Increasing the amount of time people spend at home. Man cave. You see the whole TV on that. Woman's cave or woman's uh, hut, whatever you want to call it. You know what I mean? Relaxing entertainment. So now I have a whole industry that says, why go out to the show? You don't like the crowds and everything else. So it's uh, retailers are basically adjusting to this lifestyle and has sales for products or home. You go in here, here's what your man case should be like. Here's what your woman hut or woman case should be like. Okay? A place you could kind of get away from. Staples, office, uh, deep, uh, Staples and Office Depot. A lot of more, a lot of people, men, especially men, they leave the corporate world like myself. They leave the corporate world and we're either teaching at a community college as contractors or we're doing consulting, whatever. But we have a small business. This is being recorded in my office at home. So when I'm looking at the small business, look what they're looking at. They're not making it. They cater to 27 million families. Just, just in the United States, home offices. They spend an annually of 2000 a year. And it's not much. 2000 a year. If I'm a store, if I got, uh, got 27 million people coming into my industry and spend 2000 this night, most of you spend more in a fashion and clothes over 2000 a year. But still, you know, ladies, you spend a lot. That's why a lot of fashion and everything else in retail merchandise is, is geared to women because you always want to look good. You always want the, the things. You want to be pampered. Nothing wrong with that. We understand that. That's our market. Not that men don't like to be pampered. I always like to look good. <coughs> Those of you who have me in a full-time class, you always give me fashion. George, you look at this way, or you give me a tie or something else. Hey, uh, after class, you know, I'm not, you know, pying me off. I think this will look better, or you think you cut your hair, and I and I take on to some of that. Okay, casual Fridays we talked about. You know, retail, sporty apparel have uh, repelled the benefit of more of a casual workforce. 
And if I look at Casual Friday, does it fit in your audience? Casual Friday, uh, 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 you can't go on to relax. you got to have the fur coat. you got to have the heavier clothes. Okay, so what's casual? Remember, casual depends on the industry, what pe people consider casual. Talk to your manager, those who are in that. Or you could be selling retail just for casual, for the business woman, for the businessman, for the, for the person on the go, for the single mom that wants to be professional looking. A single dad wants to be professional looking, okay? Okay, now fashion cycle. Let's go into here. We're going pretty good. Remember, it's going to be about an hour. You have to pick up a fashion cycle. And here's what the fashion cycle breaks in, just like the, everything goes in a cycle. Business cycle, uh, product uh, life cycle, and now you're going to have a fashion cycle. You have the introduction, you have the growth, the peak and maturity. Let's look at the, what the, uh, and if I look at this, all it's going to talk here. Here's the site. Introduction, few people coming in there, growth. You have more uh, knockoff copycats. People are coming in. You have more competition because, hey, that's a fashion. People are going. Remember the trend. It's not a fad. It's picking up. Moving. People want to jump on a bandwagon or like or a fashion wagon at the last uh, minute. It peaks out. It starts going down. People say, I don't want to look like him anymore. Oh, that's not fashionable anymore. Da, 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 decline, and then I get out of business. That's the model. Okay, so I'll close that off. So let me just close that. Now, introduction. What happens in introduction? Fashion leaders pay a higher prices for a new look. A test. Remember, when you see the squirt, it means it's a test. Uh, it could be on a test, uh, but as are. Look, I'm a fashion leader. I'm willing to pay the thing. I want to be different. Uh, you know, when, when I uh, teach a uh, at the college, uh, when iPhone came out, I said, who's got the new iPhone? Why? I want to see what it looks like first. How does it work? Get the information. Not the sales and advertising. So I'm in that because that's more of a, uh, uh, you know, a persuasive type of selling from the from Apple's perspective. What is the real end? Let me look. Let me touch it. Let me feel it. Let me see how it works. Let's see how I hear it. Real life in the classroom and everything else. And some people will have it right off the bat. You can see them. Even when I go out to it with parents, they got to be the first one. They may not have the best car, but they're fashionable, you know, because they want to be the trendsetters. So I understand that they're willing to pay more. Remember, uh, when we look at this window, I have a slow uh, opportunity, I'm trying to recoup my costs, I could charge them higher, okay? Then I go into the growth. Remember, here's the growth. I keep on getting more people coming in here. It's longer. Goods are available to mass. Then you have, like, the knockoff. Someone's going to be uh, 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 looks uh, adapted by fashion followers, right? Other ones are coming in, hey... This is all of a sudden caught on. Who would think that would catch it? And I use the thing with Spiegel's. Um, uh, 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 remember, uh, not Spiegel's, uh, 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 the, the real tight the swim trunks, right? And if you're looking at them, uh, uh, it wasn't fashionable until the guy says, I'm sexy and I know it started singing. All of a sudden, people were going all uh, uh, all over trying to buy them, those little uh, swim trunks. Okay? Okay, what are knockoffs? The growth phase of a fashion cycle. Uh, characterized by uh, appearances of less expensive copies of high fashion called. And here's the thing, knockoff. This is the original one. And this is the one ordered from uh, out of China. Looks close enough. It may not be. And I want to say pay less a lot of times. You know, pay less buys a lot of things for a lower cost. Some of it is from uh, the manufacturer directly. Some of it is similar to what the fashion and trend is. Unless someone's going to look at your feet and see that. It looks like it. I'm still fashion. must still look good. Peak maturity. When we're having peak maturity. Look for reaching the sales potential. Remember? Uh, I, I, I reached my sales potential. I've hit it. What happens? Available at many places. Once I get to maturity, it's going to go down. People, I don't want everyone's got the same looking. I want to be different. Some people buy at the end. That's when you start seeing the Costco's and Sam's, okay? And then the decline, sales diminish. I know it's going to decline. How quickly I get rid of the inventory before I have to put it in clearance. Retail lower prices. Replace to look for a newer trend. You know, pagers. You know, everyone's got, who. what's a pager? You know, everything's got the cell phone and everything else. And even now, if I look at everyone who's got, who doesn't have a smartphone, everyone, even grandma and grandpa has a smartphone, even when they got the big screen. It's because you can't buy anything else but a smartphone. So, they, you know, right? DVDs are replaced by Blu-rays. Eventually, Blu-rays are going to be gone. Then you have something else. Videos are replaced by streaming, right? Uh, Netflix uh, had the two things, the streaming operation and the videos. Now, the videos they're trying to get rid of because I can stream directly on the TV. You use your Xbox or your Sony. Look, I have to know how to sell my product. It's all retail merchandising. Okay, so we took care of that. Very good. Okay, now the other one, uh, high fashion versus ma uh, mass fashion. And we looked at that when you saw the, the intro of the video when I was talking about, when she was talking about, hey, people are upset that I started doing my cosmetic line or some of my clothing line at Walmart or Target. High fashion, 
Looks are created by designers exclusive sort. They want just a person to wear it. The stars only could have that. After a while, I wanted to look like my stars because they're a thing. The stars are uh, naive. I look at it, they have that. They may have a clothing line. Hey, can we make something similar like that? Or when you see on highway, uh, on highway, on Hollywood when they're having uh, the Academy Awards, all of them are dressed. Those clothes are donated by those, not donated, given to the celebrities to wear. What she wore, she wore the high end designers are giving it to them to wear because that's how they another way instead of going out there everyone is watching wow what's she wearing some of the stuff is so exotic uh, uh, uh lady gaga okay different designer perfect but that's what her niche is others come in they're trying to be that look and they, it doesn't work out for them their personality it just doesn't fit their brand but they try it and even though it's a good dress or it doesn't fit their body remember so the, what's it saying or it may be a new fashion maybe that's the way it's looking at i'm a fashion designer i'm a buyer i'm a creator i'm a manufacturer i'm a seller i have to be aware of what the trend is remember what do i think the next trend is going forward and some of it is created by the high fashion the fashion leaders buy these looks during the introduction and growth stages because they want to be the first the goods are expensive but exclusively what fashion leaders uh, uh, crave for okay now Mass fashion made by manufacturers. Now they, the leader has said people want to be that. This one's perfect. This one not perfect. This one people are looking up for. They have a large following. Then manufacturing retails all of a sudden start selling at a lower cost. May not be 100% cashmere. May not be 100% silk. Polyester. Nylon. Not polyester. Well, polyester you know, fashion is coming in. People are wearing that. You know, cause people are going to go a different market. Okay, so then I have my fashion followers. People interested in fashion wear a mass fashion. They follow this. It's similar. It's not the high end, but looks just like it. And, uh, unless you really look at the tag, you can't really tell. You know, you have a lot of people have like Rolex watches, and you could yeah, some of them are close. But a lot of times, if, if the gold's coming off, you know, it's not a Rolex. Okay, uh, uh, fashion laggards uh, want good value, but they buy late. Okay, so we have those two. Pretty good. We're moving along here. I'll try to move along. Okay, now fads and classic. Oh, sorry, I was running live, didn't even know it. I was trying to find out where it went to. Okay, uh, I hope I didn't do too bad. I was drinking a pop. Okay, fads and a sneeze, just in case I came in live. I try to put it in pause to pause in the work. Okay, so we talked about fashion life cycle, fads and uh, classic. Let's look at this, and here's the pic that I'm going to show you on. Uh, those of you are watching me, I don't do, I could edit this, but I give you the same way I'll be in the classroom. What you see is what you get. I am live, and I'm recording live. And I'm looking at that, and the reason I do that, a lot of you, sometimes you see a newspaper uh, uh, or a newscaster out there talking, and they're recording it, and this is live. Let me just, maybe one or two seconds in case a person cusses a source, they could uh, uh, delete that, you know, because whatever uh, the regulations are when they're uh, broadcasting. But in the classroom, I can't pay, uh, change it. I drop it, I change it up. So the, remember, what you have to do, be comfortable. You're reading me, just pass me along. Okay, so here's the fashion now. The cycles, remember, trends is a movement of which way fashion is going. We already talked about that. Now, what's the difference between fads and classic? A fad is very short. There's a fad. People are going to do a, 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 a certain type of a clothing. Bow ties could be a fad real quick, and then it drops down, and it becomes a classic. It stays forever. Remember, classics start off, come up, they don't change. But sometimes a classic, like the bow tie, could be a, a, a fad. Now that you see people wearing it. So let's look at classic. Fashion look that has been around longer than expected. Here's my score. Important to remember that. Retail sell classic seasons after season. Low risk example. Look at this. A little black dress is classic. Remember you saw the other one? This is always. People always look good. You know. And guys. Guys always have. Uh, and I'm not trying to be morbid here. But most gentlemen. You should at least have one dark suit. Either black or blue. In case of funeral or something else. Or if you want to look that professional look. But, and then you can have all the other uh, colors. You know, plaid is in style. Is it fashionable? But it's always in style. That's the style of plaid. But is it fashionable? And it is, looking at it as... Okay, now what's a fad? 
has a short life cycle. Remember Square? You're going to remember that. You probably saw. Savvy retails capitalize on fat. I've got this. I'm going to get rid of these uh, 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 gym shoes. I got rid of these swim trucks that no one will, uh, will wear now, but all of a sudden somebody had a hit song and he was wearing it or the band was wearing it. Now nah, I could get rid of it, make some money. I won't buy it long because I know it's going to be gone. It's just a fad. It's out of there. Okay? Popular around young people can last only for a few weeks. Timing's got to be right. And sometimes you can kind of stimulate it through the advertising. And the examples, Tickle Me Elmo and Pet Rocks, you know, picture Pet Rock. Yeah, now you can sell it for, uh, for Easter or the Easter Bunny or whatever. But, you know, that was something else. Who wants a Pet Rock? You don't have to feed it. You just talk to it. I love you. What do I get? Rock, you know, after a while, you say, I got more than a rock. I want a rock that talks. I love the rock. So the rock you shake, you shake, go out with her, yes or no. So they put a uh, Pet Rock with something in there uh, to make, but it's a fad. You buy it, you sell it, you make some money, and you know it goes into like the dollar store, goes into one of those uh, entertainment stores that you could buy stuff one of a kind that no one else has. You never use it, but you're a married person, yeah, because you, know, you got everything or she's got everything. Okay, if I look at this stupid uh, uh, fad for 2016, now I'm going to click on this one because I kind of like this one here. I think it's here. Hang on. All right, these are the styles, and I like going back. You know, and I think this, this says the fashions for guys, younger guys. And it might have went in here. This is still very fashionable. You know, the book, uh, uh, the, uh, these are more for hunting. Now it became very popular. L.L. Bean sells these, okay. This look is pretty good. The look is uh, the, uh, the safari look, for lack of a better word. Pants, right? Doesn't, you don't worry about this. More of a trim line. Look, the guy's a lot thinner. A heavier set guy may not look like this. You still look good, but you just have to make sure the suit, you know, here's your suit. I'm coming to business, all right? Here it comes, this one. Look, you see it kind of blends in. I kind of, I kind of, kind of, I like this. This is how you learn about fashion. Look, fashion design, uh, buyers, a lot of them are majority of men, and they're buying for men and women, so don't be uh, upset. This is a very casual look. It could be, you know, a two-sided jacket where you want to be this fashion or not fashionable. White pants, you know, red. You know, it still looks kind of, uh, I want to say, uh, never mind. Uh, you, know, you know what I mean? Uh, I know what my son, my, my son's, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, a banana republic type of a guy, or um, uh, some other, uh, more of a little heavier rock uh, uh, individual. So, okay, what about this one? Look at the zippers. Does it come in fashionable? These look like work boots. Hey, I got all these work boots. Also, that's a fashion. Oh my goodness, work boots with this. I could sell them. Work like be in fashion without even knowing it. Okay, so it just gives you some ideas about different fashions, right? And you know, look at the sites. Go on here. You have um, a different, uh, you know, most recent. So, uh, like I said, when I prov provide you the sites, I provide you the site so you know what you're looking at, so you're looking at it. I try to be open to everybody, but just so you understand. Now, when I look at the trickle theories, we're going to get a few more, if I'm mistaken, yeah. We're doing pretty good. Fashion is acceptance, right? These theories, the one before, the trickle down, level of society to another society, how fashion moves from one social economic from one economy i'm a rich person how do rich people drive all rules i want to be rich so if somebody says it's just a facade that makes me look like i'm rich or i'm an urban person but i'm a rich person but i want to look like a down-to-earth person so i dress like an urban person an urban person from the city i grew up in the city it used to be baggy pants black leather jackets you know got the mean look yeah that was the style come on i was growing up that style's coming back it's an urban look a little bit different uh, all right so uh, we'll talk about the trickle down effect now the trickle down effect, fashions move from one from a higher social level to uh, a levels to lower. The wealthy and the famous working down. Okay, trickle up effect, or what they call the diffusion or upward uh, flow. I'm trying to keep the, the word. This thing trickle up, trickle uh, trickle down. Fashion originates uh, originates at the street and move up. Ragged jeans. The urban look from uh, inner city. Marshall Field, a lot of them have the urban look. You're paying for that raggedy jean look instead of just wearing them uh, already all broken in. Not by person wearing them, it's just manufactured. And some of it could be recycling. What do you do? I got a recycling jean. I cut them out, make patches with one style. So what do I do with recycling so I can do something with it and also be environmentally safe? But it works upward, okay? And then the trickle across effect is horizontal diffusion. Fashion looks are similar at Saxon Target. Prices are different. I didn't say prices, but they look alike, right? It's simultaneously adapted across all, all social groups. Okay, so that's the trickle effect. Okay, let's look at the basic uh, fashion continuum. And here's the pick. 
So uh, here's how it goes. You're going to look at basic merchandise, no change, functionality, necessity. So none changes, t-shirt changes, underwear changes, functionality, bras, you know. And a lot of times I'll talk about bras and underwear. Some of the guys giggle, some of the girls giggle. Hey, I'm a, I'm a merchandiser. It's a bra. After a while, I see a thousand bras, a thousand panties, see a thousand undies, underwear. I'm selling. What's going to sell? Victoria's Secret sells different. We're going to talk to something else. So these are basic merchandise. Occasionally change. Make something change. They're more elastic. They're more, you know, uh, 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 Michael Jordan. I don't have any uh, tags in there. Be tagless. You know, this, uh, this whole thing. And now it becomes, you know, just see, the, the, uh, some changes. I make an occasional change. Now fashion merchandise. Frequent changes. Not necessity. This is uh, uh, aesthetics. Just for look. So you have to spend, where's my product? Where's it got? It, it might have moved here, it might have moved back. Does it make sense? That's to pick. So, and they talk about men's uh, 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 cotton brief, doesn't change, it's the same. All right, you know, now they have the ones, you don't have the elastic uh, or, uh, or or whatever, okay? Basic. And then, you know, uh, uh, R at the left of, uh, of the continuum, right? All the way back here. Fashion jewelry, like it or that, that changes constantly. Depending on what's fashionable. Some of them, this has two bodies, some of them also become uh, uh, more of a, uh, a basic. If I look at um, uh, Indian jewelry, was very popular from Arizona, from you know, uh, American Indians, when there was a push for that. And then now you have Indian jewelry from India, a lot of gold, a little different. You know, it's far from the thing. So, fashion merchandising is from the far right, just changes from one to the other. Okay? Now, transforming basics into fashion. How do we do this? One, first one, marketers change customers' attitude. How do they do that? By transforming rational buying, motives, reason, emotional ones. Remember? Marketing does that. You take me for market advertising. That's part of the whole thing. How do I change a person's fashion? I got stuck with all these. How do I move it? How do I make it fashionable? How do I do it? How do I end it? Because I understand the customer. I understand my target niche. I'm communicating. Other chapters. My store is is uh, is uh, uh, sending messages out there. The window person who's doing the window design. She or he makes such a design. Catches their eye. That's fashionable. What do I wear? I'm not sure what she wore. I look at the mannequin. Oh, yeah. That kind of looks good. I want just like that. Guys, ladies, I want a little of this. I want a little of that. Guys, hey, he's all dressed. I'll take him as it is. My size. I'm just saying, oh, a lot of men are very fashionable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because of uh, their wives or their girlfriends or their boyfriends or their partners. Okay? So the other one is color and texture, styling and details, offer new color, you know, athletic footwork, look, basic athletic footwork, gym shoes, they're, they're, they're a functionality. You learn to play, you know, had the, the springs in it, had the cushion, everything else. Now if I look at gym shoes, look at this, my goodness, every different color. I don't know if you play basketball, and some of you probably could. These are basketballs, you know, you've got the Nike, see how Nike, uh, I think they got the emblem in there, maybe Nike's on here, all right? So this is what makes it fashionable. Right now, I see people different colors. Hey, you you don't match. You got red uh, uh, gym shoes on, but you got a blue or a purple uh, or a plaid uh, shirt on. Ah, I couldn't find any plaid gym shoes. That's something to think about. Okay, now the other one is let's look at Victoria's Secret. Victoria's Secret for the last thing is Valentine's Do's and Don'ts. Victoria, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go. That's a minute. It's just basically val. You know, it's around Valentine's Day. Let's let's just run it through real quickly here. It's in advertising, and it's targeted to men. Victoria's Secret to men. Something? Ladies, you look at that because, uh, hey, I want to be like that. Do's Dude, and don't. Send flowers. Yes, even guys like getting flowers. Right, okay. Don't do. ever wear granny panties. Okay. Don't cry if you don't have a date. Do buy me chocolate, please. Chocolate, chocolate. These are the models. <laughs> do. Serenade me. Love me at first sight. That's a no, no, no. <laughs> don't bring your mother on our date. That's what I want to see. Don't bring your mother on a date. I want to kid. Okay. Remember, something like, but they're doing it. Look at how they do it. Who's their audience? They're targeting women and men. They're looking, ooh, you know what I mean? And women are going, hey, I can see, I can see myself like that. Because, right? You, you look at the models. They're, they're an everyday. They don't have too much makeup on. But they're, they're selling. Okay. So let me turn this one off. Okay, so Victoria's Secrets. And if I look at here, Victoria's Secrets, I've got their a website. But I think let me go on here. This is their website. So if I look at Victoria's Secret, Victoria's Secret is looking at the higher-end uh, lingerie, looking at the higher-end uh, clothing line. They're trying to say, hey, you could be sexy without being, uh, uh, um, I don't know, whatever, uh, 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 provocative and sexy without being downright 
dirty for lack of a better word and that's not even a good wording but uh, yeah so got bra sale but everything else is very high end right when you take a victoria's secret you're going high end and high price no problem okay now who's victoria's secrets competitor you have the next one lover's lane oh my goodness lover's lane now it's lover's lane looking at the high end i already got a different victoria's secret pink but we've got pink here's victoria lover's lane uh sex toys right off the bat i'm not selling one over the other competitors one is high end, trying to go into Marshall Field. Uh, Lover's Lane is, hey, you want to have some fun? You have something else? Here's what we have: lingerie, plus sizes, uh, fetish, foreplays, bachelorette, men's. You got men's shoes, men's shoes, clothing line, body shapers. Everything. Else. I'm not gonna go through this. All I'm saying is two different markets. They're still selling the same thing. I want to look good for my, for my loved one who loves me. But I don't have the money, or I want to look. But I want to be a little bit dirty today. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> Oh my God, Dr. Joy, don't say that. All I'm saying is, look, I'm a marketer, I'm a business, I'm a buyer. How am I going to buy? Look at this. Remember, look at the And look at the, who's my target market. And look, you could have people that are going for the Victoria's Secret, you know, try to be that more elegant and more uh, 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 different type of a lady versus then uh, uh, your lover's lane. And lover's lane is always crowded. Jeez. I, not that I go in. I just drive by and say, man, always got people going in there. You're younger. You want to do something else. You want to uh, you want to bring some, you know, the marriage is going down or your love life. You want, you want to bring some uh, 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 something new in there. You want to rebrand yourself. Victoria's Secret, high end. This one, both of them are targeting the same thing. Men's, uh, I mean, men's or women's uh, 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 lingerie, clothing line, your know, bras, uh, underwear, and everything else. Or I could just do, uh, you know, the basic. So I got a classic. You still need the bra, white does the functional thing. But then I go with the fashion. It's got po polka dots, more provocative, for lack of better words. All right, I'm gonna end that one. I know. Okay, so let's look at this one here. We'll get a few more. Fashion influence. Who influences fashion? Technology. Remember? Technology, Italian job. Uh, 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 the movie, The Italian Job. What was that? Italian is when Mini Cooper did wonders for Mini Cooper. No one ever heard of Mini Cooper. You know, we're always looking at right sports car, fast sports car. Mini Cooper. Man, that's a nice car. I wonder, it has a lot of room. And, 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 and yeah, I think, I forgot who the heck makes that. I want to say uh, BMW. I could be wrong on that. Uh, but a uh, good car, very well. The high up pricing. I like the, uh, you know, the, and see, have different styles. You got the four doors, you got the, the Explorer, the, you know, the sunroof goes all the way back. The economy has a big influence on fashion. Economy's down. People want to look good, but they can't charge the high prices. Society, what are the elite wearing? What are the urban wearing? You know, uh, what's the mixture? If you see something happens negatively to uh, to one individual, to one uh, culture, the other culture tries to say, hey, we're going to wear the same kind. We want to uh, say, hey, uh, we're walking with you or behind you. And then, and remember, I'm a, I'm a retail merchandiser. I'm looking at events. Could something happen, all of a sudden the product is not moving, I'm making money, or the product that uh, is not moving, I could sell it for a higher price. Or how do I get rid of this product, or how do I make a fashion statement to that product. And in Hollywood, always, remember, this is 01, uh, 1959, A Place in the Sun, it's just that the author had it through it in there, publicized the drawers, new look, celebrities, you know, what she wore. And you see that now. And globalization, people look to see what the, in the movies the U.S. has made, see other movies, in, uh, I think in uh, Japan, where they have the, the different colors. I can't think what it's called right now, and I apologize. That's a fashion movement here. People are looking, I see a lot, you know, got the blue and the orange hair and everything else. That's a fashion statement. Look, when I was growing up, I had long hair. That was a fashion statement. When my kids looked at me, says, says, uh, 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 Dad, you're an ugly-looking woman. Uh, who could I say? All right. Now, fashion innovations for the 20th century. If I look at that, what's happening for the 20th century? Here's what you're doing. Wash and wear. You know, that was innovation. Easy. Online shopping, luggage, a bikini came in. You know, pants for women, demon. Uh, actual, you know, here's another one. Uh, uh, these are all the uh, designers uh, came in there. Polyester was big. And it was 100% cotton because, you know, no itching, no nothing. Backpack, uh, khakis, uh, miniskirts. Miniskirts are back in. They were out before. Longer, you know, sports bra because people are very athletic. They're in, they're out, you know, uh, preppy look. And this is just uh, something that's happening in the 20th century. So if you're looking what happened. Last thing we have is retail and fashion. All right, fashion goods. Like it or not, in retail merchandising, whether you have the mannequin, you have the dummy, you have something that's fashionable to bring the people in, whatever you're selling, can increase your sales. People want to be different, 
in any kind of merchandise. You're trying to find out how I'm going to increase my sales. Uh, are riskier than retails to offer offer because you're taking a gamble on that. Fashion buyer must. Uh, select appropriate look. You're looking in the future. This is a pretty good in, in industry. You're, there's a lot of trade shows. You already know what colors the manufacturer is going to cover. What's the color in the next two years? And you start saying, you know, the designers. Not just going to happen over uh, overnight. They're coming in. They're coming on ideas. What do I have to work with? How do I change? Uh, our sales and profits. You know, if you don't. Uh, if you don't do it well, if you're not buying at the right time, appropriate look, you're you're stuck with stuff that's last year's, you know, still a classic, it's still a style, but it's not fashionable now. You're stuck with probably get to sell at regular prices or try to offload. Sometimes you may have a a, 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 a certain uh, clothing line that may not be fashionable up north, but maybe fashionable down south or another part of the country. Elvis look. Right now, everyone sees Elvis, he's been, there's other people coming in there. But I could sell somebody else once and Elvis look, uh, look in a third country and still make, you know, not third country, third country means not the, the, a developing economy. All right? Okay, and the fashion industries contain some element of fashion. Retail is promoted, right? Advertising, sales promotion, product uh, presentation, direct selling, that means the salespeople wearing it, you know, uh, but makes the retail job more complex. All right? All right, I'm done here. Jeez, we went through a lot here. Hopefully, I'm underneath an hour. I think the last one I did was an hour and 15 minutes. I try to do this class. Remember, this is the only time. Some of you online, this is my only lecture. Those of you looking at, uh, uh, just pick this up on YouTube. Or if you're at the college, uh, at, uh, 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 you know, a lot of community colleges has like uh, uh, iTunes U just for the university. You pick it up, look me up at the college. I, I, I teach at community college at Cook County. And I teach at uh, uh, Lake County, uh, uh, you know, in the community college in Harper at Cook County look me up ask for me I'm trying to pay off my student loan so I'm a contractor uh, to both schools and as long as I get classes people taking my classes courses uh, everyone does well okay and you're learning we're learning as a team I'm learning from you those of you in the classes remember this is just a quick overview for those of you in here get the credit hours so then when you go in there they're looking at I got the experiences I've done a um, uh, what do you call it a retail merchandising plan layout for a new business as a team i've worked at this is part of the requirement for the course uh, that you're taking me for and i'll see you in the next uh, uh, next section on chapter seven again my name is dr george machaki and welcome to retail merchandising uh, uh fashion uh, merchandising depending on what uh, college i'm teaching at look me up got different uh, increments and uh We'll see you in the next class. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, uh, some of you saw my earlier, I, I just showed this in some of my earlier uh, uh, YouTube clips. Oh, man, he's really, really stiff, boring. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still old. I, I'm getting older. Uh, what you see is what you get. But what happens is I get more relaxed. It's just, an, I, I'm looking out there. You know, I don't see your faces. I could look right in there. I know you're looking at me. So, you know, if you like the videos, you know, uh, look at them. Uh, enjoy, pass them along. But, uh, but most of all, uh, sign up for the classes. It helps the school. Remember, because small businesses, you can't afford four universities. And a lot of people, a lot of students have to pay for their own education. Education is expensive. Utilize it at a community college. I don't care what community college we are going. Community colleges are, uh, you know, the, some of it is funded by the your tax base. It's a good start. Most of the schools, uh, the, most of the schools I'm, uh, I'm teaching at uh, has a high percentage of PhDs. You know, so you're not being taught by TAs as you would in a, you know, for lack of better words, in a four-year university or some of the higher ends. You're actually talking by individuals who have the degrees, been in the business, been in the profession, but we like teaching more than we like doing the research aspect. All right. So my name is Dr. George Machaki, and uh, thank you for uh, uh, spending your time with me. Bye.